What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Adult Algorithm, the How to Adult Podcast with your host, Jasmine Johnson. I sound like I'm out of breath because I just like ran to my computer because I have an event in a couple minutes and I have to go to it. Um, anyways, catching my breath. Hi, welcome to episode 17. If you're new, hi, welcome. My name is Jasmine Johnson um, and this is the Adult Algorithm, helping you, you know, grow into the adult that you deserve to be. I'm helping you grow into your potential. Um, and it's the how to adult podcast <laughs> and we are also hashtag no sugar coating so that is basically what we're about um, and I hope that you can stay for a while and listen to um, probably one of the most exciting episodes that I've ever done so hi welcome and if you are not new thank you for always supporting me and we have an awesome surprise at the end speaking of surprise so as you know on the YouTube channel if you watch on the YouTube I do shirt of the week we are saying R.I.P. to Shirt of the Week because we have something better coming. That's going to be part of the surprise at the end. But I have to give you the best shirt that I've ever gotten. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do it on the podcast as well. So this shirt, I'm going to show you if you're on the YouTube. If you're not on the YouTube, go check it out really quick and then go back to like Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It says, hey, bitches get stuff done, AOC. It was one important because I freaking love this shirt. Um, it was given to me for Christmas by my boyfriend's brother, Steven. Shout out Steven. Shout out his podcast, Playoffs and Politics. Go check it out. Um, but not only that, after AOC's live yesterday, um, I thought it was just really important to, you know, give the power to her because you might not agree with her political beliefs, but you cannot not recognize that she's um, somebody who's going to be very powerful um, and somebody who actually wants to do something good for the community. Um, and for the greater good. So, you know, I just had to let my last shirt of the week be an AOC shirt, of course. Um, like I said, this is the one of the most exciting podcasts. I think this is the most exciting podcast I've, I've done yet. Um, I'm only on episode 17, but, you know, it just keeps getting better and better every episode, and I absolutely love it. This episode, I am so proud to say that we have um, a guest who I look up to so much, um, and she's also the first guest that's not my friend or family, <laughs> but now she is part of the adult algorithm family, so I am so excited to introduce her. First of all, she is not only somebody who is famous on TikTok, in my opinion she is, almost 200k, are you kidding? But she really really wants you know women to be confident and especially in a male dominated field um and this episode is about that confidence her confidence in herself um in her major in her um career and in her tiktok so when she said that she would come on um during the live that you know i came on and i was like i typed it you'll see it and you'll hear it um if you're watching the YouTube, you'll see me literally typing and making all the spelling errors because I'm so nervous, but you'll be hearing her um, in her live when she agreed to come on. I was so excited. I had a feeling she was going to say yes, so I was like, this would be a cool intro if she did say yes. We are welcoming, welcoming, <laughs> welcoming Engineer Lean onto the adult algorithm. Applause, applause, applause. Engineer Lean, an icon, a queen. I mean, I will literally take a comment bullet for her um because i literally come at all the men in her comments because i'm crazy um and i'm so excited for you guys to hear what she has to say her advice to all of you her story her journey i'm ecstatic and we play stump the stereotype at the end again i freaking love that i love that game it's a really good time i'm so excited and like i said before we have a huge surprise at the end of the episode i'm telling you this is such an exciting episode we have a huge surprise at the end please stay take a seat dr get your hot cocoa and get ready for an amazing episode no they don't it's crazy Ooh, i'd love to be on a podcast i would literally love it fiance reveal he's not here right now um but yeah i would love to do a podcast that'd be fun my name is colleen and it's my real name. Engineer Lean is, is my stage name, let's say. <laughs> um, my real name is called Lean. Everyone calls me Lean. Um, so Engineer Lean is just my username for everything. I just thought it was funny. Um, I'm 23 years old. I went to Florida State. I just graduated. Oh, my God. 
last, I mean, almost a year ago last yeah. night. That's nuts. I'm sorry. I just had a moment there. For a crazy. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, and just considering that COVID has been going on that long, like that just registered in my brain. Wow. Um, wow. yeah. So I graduated last May. Um, the last three months of my semester about was all online. I didn't get a graduation or anything like that. Um, yeah. I didn't even get to take my FE, which is fundamentals exam. The engineers will know uh, mm -hmm. what that is. But so I graduated with my civil and I started working um, for a family firm down here in Florida. And um, that's what I do now, a structural engineering firm. So we're basically just working on homes, like yeah. residential all the time. Um, we've done some commercial work, but I haven't dabbled in that yet. I haven't done any inspections for that. I've mostly just been covering um, pretty cookie cutter homes. Like uh, if you walk into a community and all the houses kind of look the same, oh. all the same style, that's what I'm covering right now, mm -hmm. especially because I'm new and I'm learning and it's, it's pretty simple. Yeah, pretty simple. <laughs> um, that's what I do basically on a day-to-day -day basis is inspections, inspections, inspections. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then grout monitoring, which I've made the video on. Um, that's a new task that they just added on, which is me just watching them pour concrete, which is. That sounds fun. fabulous. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good time. So <laughs> that's really all about me. I have two dogs. That's it. I, I don't have that yeah, interesting yeah. life, honestly. <laughs> well, thank you, one for coming on and taking a chance on like a smaller podcast when you have like a big platform. I'm like so appreciative for that. Thank you very much. I, it wasn't even a second thought. I'm, I'm sorry that I had to push it back. I got oh, I got good. sick and it was it was not a fun week that was. So You're then I came it. back to work and it was nuts. So I'm glad that we we finally got to do it because I've been meaning to do it for you know for a while now. So yeah. thank I'm you. Very much. When I like when I commented on your live, like come on my podcast. I was not expecting you to see it because everyone's commenting and being like, oh my God, you're so pretty asking you a billion like valid questions and like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And then you were like, I'll be on a podcast. I was like, she talking to me? What? what? Yeah, of course. I love stuff like this. And I love being able to, yes, I have the platform on TikTok now, but I love branching out and, you know, not everybody that would listen to you doesn't have TikTok and some people have no clue that I even exist yet so if any way that I can I wouldn't say inspire but um yes inspire <laughs> like, that sounds so weird to say that I, I mean like any way to just get a girl feel motivated or you know I'll do it okay. don't worry so no Love biggie it. at all and if you're ever in Rhode Island Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The first person I'll hit up. I think you're the only person I know in Rhode Island right now. <laughs> I think oh, so. Yeah. Serious. I don't think I know anybody. I don't think I do. But yeah. Perfect. Where are you from, by the way? I'm from here. I'm from South Florida. Wow. Yeah. Love that. Because like, you drink Duncan and you like, wear Boston stuff. So I was just like, is she from New England? So actually, I'm a huge Patriots fan, and it's because um, my whole family's from New England. So I I didn't grow up there, but all of my family trips were there. Every summer, I was up in New Hampshire. Um, I still have some family up in Vermont area. So uh, you know, and I've been to Boston so many times, and it's by far one of my favorite places to go. One day, I hope to live there. I just I yeah. I just love it. So yeah, huge New England fan. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> As you should, as you should. <laughs> I'm going to Florida in a couple of weeks too. Are you serious? Where? Um, the basic Orlando Universal and, um, you know. That's, that's far, but that's fun. Orlando's fun. It's yeah. a good time. Yes, I'm very it's excited. It's a good time. I'm a huge Harry Potter fun. fan. Never been to Florida? So I went in the spring last year when everything got shut down. I was in Florida. Oh, did, were you stuck? I almost got stuck because I was sick too. So. Oh, that sucks. So I got. Oh, that's scary. Florida. I came back. They wouldn't let me test, even though I had every single symptom. Like when I say every single symptom, every single symptom. Um, I mean, it was crazy. Like I came back negative for flu, pneumonia, cold.
cold like e like everything was like coming back negative and they still wouldn't test me and that's but that's right at the beginning when we were like we had no idea what was like going on crazy that is crazy well good thing you're okay because I could have been fat yeah totally but yeah I'm chilling I'm excited good yeah yeah, yeah no I, I love Florida it's it's some people don't like Florida, but I love it. I think yeah. it's awesome. Weather here is great. Yeah. It is hot though. It's so hot. Oh yeah. I can only imagine. I don't know how you deal with yeah, that. That's my hair. I don't if you can get a close up, but it's it's been real sweaty and very <laughs> hard hat today. It is, it is like greased down, slicked right now. Just gonna keep um, it real. <laughs> it's, a look. it's a look. Yeah. No one knows the difference between yeah. grease and like what <laughs> yeah it looks like gel it's fine right like <laughs> <laughs> okay let me stop oh, <laughs> i'll act i'll actually ask you questions now <laughs> questions i'm excited to hear these okay um the first one is what was going through your mind when you woke up and your like first TikTok blew up. I ha I have to ask that first because I can't even imagine. So I remember it and it was the best Thursday ever. It was so fun. I was at a grout monitor and I'm sitting there with, I, was, I, was, I don't know if I should say his name or not, but I'm sitting there, I'm at a grout monitor. I posted it at like, so when I'm grout monitoring, they like to start super early and um, they push it back for me because I still get there at eight, which is early, but normally they'll do it at like 6 a.m. Those yeah. guys are crazy. Um, so I got there early, like 7.30. We're waiting on the truck. And I um, I think the truck just got there. And protocol is when a truck pulls up, I let them set up and then I'll go up and um, check their time stamps and all that stuff. I've posted a YouTube video on it. But um, he got there. So I'm letting him set up and I'm just on TikTok, kind of like, I'm drinking my coffee, kind of like warming up. It's like 7 a.m. Like I just rolled out of bed. And I just made that TikTok thinking no one's going to see it except for like my five friends. And to be honest, I've made Snapchats of like that exact same content. But someone's like, you got to post stuff like that on TikTok. It'd be so funny. What if it blows up? So I'm like, let me try it. So I posted it on my TikTok, that Grinch one. It was funny because it people who aren't in construction – don't find it funny mm -hmm. and I, I get that because they don't they don't understand the way that it is out there but it really is it, I keep it professional and everyone keeps it professional but there is this like line of jokes and just talking crap that goes on and it's constant like it does not stop and if you cannot handle it or keep up you're just gonna get ran over so I, I'm sure he was talking some crap to me so I made that stupid TikTok like okay well I'm gonna tell you what to do why don't you go set up your concrete you know I'm just talking smack right yeah, yeah. so I make that he knows I'm making it we're sitting there cracking up we think it's funny right we're thinking two people are gonna see it I think maybe an hour goes by and I open TikTok back up and it's at like 12,000 likes and I'm like holy crap I'm famous <laughs> like I'm leaving I'm at like 12,000 right and it's, it's nonstop. My friends are calling me. They're like, holy crap, what's going on? Within three hours, it hit 500,000. And I'm like, so me and him were sitting there and he's like, no way is that going to blow up. You're not going to get any more famous. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop. It's going to stop. Mm -hmm. Throughout the whole day, it just kept growing, growing, growing. And the next morning, I woke up to it hitting 4 million views and 1 million likes. And um, I'm, I'm screaming at Peyton. I'm like, oh! It's like 6 a.m. before I go to work. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm famous. Like whatever, whatever. I'm just totally joking. And I call him up who I was working with the day before. And I said, I told you it was going to get big. And I sent him this photo. Of He's like, holy crap. That's, you know, that's nuts. He's like, but run with it. And, um, and it was just really exciting. And I, I went to work that day and I made the next video because I, w I read all the comments and there's a lot of people in this engineering field that I just like I had no clue at all I, I don't even know I know maybe like five girls that do engineering I know most I know a lot of guys that do it but other than the people I went to school with I don't know anybody that is either into it or interested or any of that so it was like this whole new world that just opened up to me and I'm like oh my god this is great so I posted my next video which was like 
guys, I'm like overwhelmed. Any questions you have, comment them and I'm gonna, I'll answer. Like I'll make this TikTok about engineering. Like let's do this. And that one blew up too. And ever since then, you know, the rest is history, but yes, it was, it was pretty cool All for that one video. And the funny thing is, and it's not that funny. I spelt woman wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. That is yeah. hilarious. That's my big break is I don't even know how to spell like, and it's so on brand for me too. Like anybody that knows me, like I am just, I'm wicked smart with numbers. I can, I can, any math I can do and it's no biggie, but when it comes to like grammar, spelling, like it's game over. Words, no, I'm like a, a 12 year old. Like I cannot write, read, like I can't even speak half the time. So it was just so on brand for me too. And it was just, all my friends were cracking up and it was just, you know, now I ran with it. I went into work that next day. I'm not kidding. Um, one of my bosses, I, I called before he showed up to work and I told him about the, uh, the TikTok and he walks in, he's like, where's your two weeks? I thought you were out of here. And I'm like, I am out of here. I showed up to do you a favor. Okay. Like I'm out of here. <laughs> like I'm gone. It's over. And I, I gained, like, yeah, like screw engineering, like TikTok here I come, I'm moving to LA. Um, and I woke up with like, with that 4 million views, it was like, 35,000 followers, which is like, that's huge for me. I was like, I had like 500 to start. Right. So I'm like, increase that much. And then just with time now I'm at 125, which is like, it's just, it's, I can't even fathom it to be yeah. honest. It's still not that much. I mean, people have millions, but you know, still. it's cool for me. Yeah. You know? People have millions, but are, you know, not inspiring and teaching the things that you are and like giving clapbacks to the right. haters like people aren't doing that like you're almost at 200k and you're gonna get there and it's gonna happen then 500k and then a million we're coming I hope so because that would be just so freaking cool I mean I'm happy with where I'm at now like I would totally just coast this yeah um, but I would just keep growing and helping people out you know because yeah. I, I I try to feel better too I, I like to talk about engineering and stuff but absolutely trying to relay confidence and like loving yourself that's huge for me too and I, I I'll do that all day long even yeah. even for five followers I'll do that so you know so yeah that was it <laughs> love it um going off of that you deal with haters a very specific type of way. And a lot of people don't like it for some reason. It's also the way I deal with haters. So I love it. And it's hilarious. I think it's absolutely so funny. But some people hate it. And I'm like, why? But what made you choose that way to deal with haters than choose another way? So it's also very on brand for me too. Like anybody that knows me, if you're hating on me, I'm going to turn it into a joke because right. it truly, words just don't get to me. And, but if you mess with my family or, or my friends, then I get super, super defensive. And then you don't, you don't want to, that's like another animal. That's another person that's, you know, don't the know way her. that I deal with it. Right. Yeah. We don't know her. She comes out very rarely, but when she does, it's, it's, it's dangerous. But, um, the way that I deal with them. I've tried to ignore them and I do ignore a lot. And everyone's like, why do you even care? Like, why do you even bother? Um, it's hard. And it's just not on brand for me to read those and just, eh, no, I'm not going to address that. No, I'm not going to address that. Because that's also a huge reason why I'm doing this was because there's a lot of backtalk with females mm -hmm. being in power at all. You know, right. not yeah. just an engineer. Male, but just women in general in any field it's a competition and it sucks that there is and everyone you know wants says that there is equal and it's just not. it's not I'm sorry it's just not you can visibly see it in the comments I just piss men off mm -hmm. uh, and not I don't piss construction men off the dudes that are in construction get my humor a hundred percent and they right. you know they all love it on brand for that but if you don't know me and you don't know what it's like to talk shit on a construction site, you're just going to take it terribly and just think that I am conceited, nasty, you know, bragging. It's not. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel bad that they take it that way, but I can't, you know, I can't please that's, anybody. Yeah, that's but, the problem. Well, that, and I could be like a saint and build houses for homeless people and like feed, you know, everybody. I, yeah. I could be nice, not that I, like I could, and someone still, exactly, like Jesus Christ still got hated on, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, someone's gonna hate you regardless. So, the way that I deal with it is just through humor. And also in that I bring to light all the crap that I do get. And cause some people are like, no one even hates on you. And I'm like, oh yeah, read, like- this, read this. Like, where do you think that I'm not getting hated on? It is constant. I try to ignore it, but I like to make light of it and just laugh at them because it's so funny to me, I mean like real talk. I have a group of friends that if they ever saw my name underneath like a random person's post and I'm like saying nasty stuff, I would get roasted. Mm. They would be like, Colleen, why are you commenting on like random people's stuff? Like, right. that's weird. Right. So I also want to call that out. I'm like, do you not have anyone like back checking you? Like, what makes you think that you could just come on here and say that? And it, it I don't know, sometimes it gets on my skin just in that ass. Yeah. Right. And I wanted to bring that to light and be like, Let's not, well, because even though it doesn't affect me, like I go to bed at night perfectly fine, but it could affect someone. If they're commenting that stuff on other people's stuff, they might not take that the way that I do and will take it to heart and get insecure and hate themselves. And I don't like that. So I like to show to other girls that even though you do get hate comments, like don't let it bother you. Just laugh at it. Like if you hate on me, I just think you have a crush on me. Yes. Oh my I don't know if you saw my last like comment on your video. I was cracking up. You're like, um, I think you might have a little crush on me, but I wouldn't fall for you anyway. So I was cracking up. I just don't think this is going to work. I'm sorry. You know, so it's like, why are you hating if you can't even get in? You know, you're outside the club. You can't even get in. Why are you hating? So... And it's, it just, it makes light of the situation, too, because I have gotten some, some really awful stuff. Um, what about your DMs and it, I just, That guy that made the video. <laughs> embarrassing. I was like, I, I commented, this is so embarrassing for him. And mad people <gasps> that comment. I was like, oh, thanks for making me famous. <laughs> but this is so embarrassing for him. No, it's because, like I said, if if I came for someone individually and just, like, completely obliterated their existence, uh, by all means, you have every right, comment on my nose, my hair, my eye, like, roast me, please. Right. If I deserve it, roast me. But if I'm making a funny TikTok that you just decide to take wrong, why? Like, I don't know. It's just there's no explanation for it that makes sense. No. I just would never do it. And that dude's, like, seven years old. Like, delete tiktok off of your phone sir please <laughs> someone like <laughs> jesus like, to take care of like grandkids hello grandkids a job like anything i don't yeah. know i'm just hmm. people are... so yeah um okay no. i like that question you um <laughs> So kind of moving on from that, I know you've wanted to be an engineer like for your whole life um, because your dad was always an engineer. Yeah, and my family too was just always in construction. Like I've just been around building houses. And then my mom was also, she flipped houses. um, Mm -hmm. And my grandma is an interior designer. So it's like just houses in general. I've just grown up around it. And the thing is, I'm not creative. I have no designer brain, like sense of style at all, but I'm really good at math. So how do I get into building houses, you know, and my two options were architecture, which is like designing the houses um, or engineering and structural where you just, you build it and you do the math for it. So that's how I picked it. And look, actually, that's funny that you said that. My mom sent me this the other day, and it is hilarious. It's me when I was a baby, and I am on a set 
of plants. Um, let me see if I can make it bigger. That's me. I don't know if you can see it. I'm on a set of blueprints as a literal baby. <gasps> that is so butt I'm covered in a diaper. But um, <laughs> yeah, so that's, I mean, I just, like I said, I just grew up around it. I just yeah. don't know anything else. I don't know what else I would do. And that's right. it. So through college, like, did you have any doubts in your mind at all? Like, I know we were talking about how many credits you've taken and, you know, how, how hard it is as a major. Did you have any doubts in your mind at all? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, a lot of doubts. Stroh's is the, um, Stroh's and Dirac are the two libraries at Florida State that I would study at. And, um, man, the, uh, the way they explain it and everyone explains engineering is it's a weeding out process. Mm -hmm. And the first year is, is a little bit of a taste, but your sophomore year, if you cannot get through it, you cannot get through the rest. And they literally call it a weeding out process. Like if, if you don't get through sophomore year, you're done. Like don't even bother coming to the engineering um, right. school, which is a different building from Florida State that's over at like the FAMU side. Mm -hmm. um, they hold true to that, that, I don't know what that, I was going to say stereotype, but that's not the word I'm looking for. Not like, See, I'm not even good with words. <laughs> yeah, no, but they hold true with it. I mean, it really, that sophomore and junior year were the hardest that I've ever, ever been pushed. And it pushed my mental health. It pushed my physical health. It pushed every, my relationships, my friendships, it pushed everything. And there were times where I got a C or I got a D that I just felt like I didn't deserve and I would try to fight them and you don't get anywhere really with that. And unless you have like concrete solid proof, but you know, with, with that is in engineering, everybody fails. Um, they just curve it at the end. <laughs> so whether you met, like everybody's it's just some people have a better failing score and then when they curve it those people move forward and then I got stuck behind when I feel like I'm doing average like I'm right I'm right with the curve I just like there was this one class that I just didn't make that curve um that I felt like for sure I was gonna at least get a C like I was I was good to go I woke up with a D and I just bawled my eyes out and I, I tried to fight it I was like depressed I just I had to take it. It was physics. Um, and I had to take it again, but I thought that it was my, you get two fails or two D's. Um, and then you're out, like you get two chances and that's it. And I thought it was my second chance because I failed chemistry too my freshman year, but that was just me being negligent and a partier. That was, it wasn't like, cause I couldn't, but yeah. physics, I really tried and I got a D and I, man, that broke me. And I just was, I was on the phone with my parents just bawling. I'm like, I don't know what to do. If I get kicked from the program, what am I going to do? Mm. I don't know. I had no backup plan. No idea of even what I would want to do if engineering wasn't the option. So yeah. I think that that also, as, as awful as that sounds, I didn't have a backup plan. I think that's why I pushed through was because I didn't have a backup plan. This was hit or miss. If I don't do this, I'm in my head, I told myself I'd just be a failure. But that's not true. But I said, if I cannot do this, I'm going to fail. And I'm going to fail at life. Everyone knows I'm going to be an engineer one day. And I'm going to let everybody down if I don't do this. So it was kind of like a motivator in a way, but yeah. also very bad for mental health. So don't, don't do it. If you're listening, don't, don't do that. There's always another option. <laughs> to yeah. do. You don't have to, you know, kill yourself the way that I did. But um, there were times that I just really mentally was like checked out I was like I can't do this anymore hard. yeah that's really hard um so. and through that I mean how did you even remotely stay motivated through like the hardest two years sophomore and junior year that's mainly what the age of our listeners are just because we help the transition between high school into college but right. more the college into the workforce how did you stay motivated through that I get this question a lot and I even got this question about on my live yesterday and as I don't want to sound shallow because money is and everything money does not buy happiness but truly it is a motivator for yeah. me there is a certain lifestyle that I want to live and 
I do not want to depend on any man, my parents, a friend, my sister, my brothers. I don't want to do, I don't want anybody to get me there except for me. Yeah. Because if I want, I, I want my own money. If I want to go get a bag, I'm going to go get a bag. If I want yeah. a new car, I'm going to go get a new car. If I want a pair of shoes, I don't want to ask anybody for it. I want to go get it. Mm -hmm. If I want to buy a house, I want to go buy that house. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to ask or be in a partnership with somebody that, you know, like a relationship where people are, I just, I want to do it on my own. Absolutely. And the way that that was just how I was raised too, is that, you know, you don't ask for help. You, you do, you do it. You do it. And that's just, you know, don't depend on anybody because guess what? If you depend on somebody and they leave you, you're, you're stuck. You're high and dry. You have no money, no job, nothing. What are you going to do? So I want to be dependent on myself. And if I am alone, I'm okay with being alone. You know, yeah. I can be fun to myself. So money really is the motivation. Yes. <laughs> to be completely honest, it really is. And it's, it's, it's shallow to say. Oh, it. no way. It is so not shallow. I completely understand where you're coming from. People were so confused. I was originally a fashion major and I switched to accounting and people were really like, um... That is a huge difference. It's a huge difference. Yeah. And it, it truly was because I, I have a lifestyle I want to live and I can get there through accounting the best and the fastest. Yep. So people really didn't understand that until, you know, and they think it's shallow, but it's until you're in the situation, it you nobody really understands until you're in it. And, and but that's, it, it is fine if, if people... Because the thing is, is some people might go into a major that they just hate and they're working this job that they don't like. And yes, they're making a lot of money, but they're miserable. So right. I'm, I'm thankful that I do love what I do and, and I can make money doing that. Um, so if anybody's listening, don't just jump into a career that you don't like because it's going to make you money. Make yeah. sure you like it because money does not buy happiness. So mm. there is that line, fine line too. <laughs> but like there was this one... Um, stupid tumblr meme back in high school mm -hmm. remember when tumblr was a thing yeah. and it was like a girl you could just imagine the the picture of tumblr like the the like blacked out yeah. like colors and the, and the like cursive weird words so yeah. it said money doesn't buy happiness but i sure as shit rather cry in my porsche <laughs> than i would in my Honda Civic. you know and I read that and I'm like, absolutely. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll cry in my Porsche all day long. No complaints at all. Like, no or complaints. Or you Ram Rebel. Or oh. you Ram Rebel. Or a Ram Rebel or a Mercedes. You know what I mean? Like, just any any car that I want, I'll cry in it, you know? <laughs> and I want to be able to, to do that. I just, and with that lifestyle, I just don't want to feel restricted. Mm. in my lifestyle if I want to go do something I'm gonna go do it if I want to get something I'm gonna go get it I don't want to have to depend anybody for it so Absolutely. that was really money is the most yes yeah, I, all in all yeah <laughs> <laughs> um before your career kind of kicked off were there people that were telling you you know oh do you think this is a good idea um are you sure you want to do this do you think you'll be able to actually do it and if there were, what would you say to them now? I never had any doubters, I guess I would say. Um, I mean, maybe I did. they were never vocal about it. I'm sure some people doubted me. Um, that was also a motivator too. Sorry, just to jump back was if people, the way that I handle haters. Okay, so to jump back away, it's <laughs> blend it all together deal with haters to deal with you know being motivated I didn't want to prove anybody right I wanted to prove everybody wrong mm -hmm. so I want to make it in life I want to be successful and anybody that's hated me or we've had beef or you know whatever I sometimes will just let it go and I'll be like you know what you're, you're talking all that smack but let, let's put it on pause for a second let's see where I'm at in five years and let's see where you're at in five years. And then we can talk again. Yes. How about that? Like, let's, let's pause, pause, but let's do this in 10 years and see, you know, just see where we're at. Let's see who can, who can talk the most smack then, you know yeah. what I mean? So that was another motivator for me. 
I don't, I forgot how I just got there. I just like looped around. That's oh, it. doubters. Very full circle. <laughs> doubters. Full circle, full circle. So doubters, um, not that I, anybody had voice to me. Um, I, you know, I do get the comments of, oh, what are, what are you going to do? For, and back when I was in high school, like, oh, what are you going for, to school for? Oh, what's your major? Even in, in college when you're meeting people, oh, what are you here for? When I say engineering and I know female engineers will have my back on this, people are like, oh. Like, wow. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, you're an engineer? Like it's like I just said I'm from Mars or something. Like it's like this nutty thing people can't grasp their brain around. It feels good when they do that because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an engineer. You're like, like yeah. yeah. Um, but other than that, no really doubters that you know that I've really had to face. I'm just and I think it's because. I've always wanted to be an engineer. I didn't switch my major. Or anything. I probably, if I had switched my major, my parents would be like, are you sure? Like, no, but I, I've kind of been dead set on this my entire life. So I don't think anybody really questioned, you know, my ability. I yes, guess. definitely. Um, what has been in your engineering career so far? I know it's um, only been a little bit after you graduated, but what do you think has been like the toughest day you've had so far? Probably today, I'm not gonna lie. Today was a pretty bad day. Um, it was really stressful um, this morning just with dealing with inspections and could there's some confusion. And, um, that's probably the toughest part. One, because it's gas money. When I'm driving around in inspections, I'm spending a lot of money in gas and that truck is not cheap. <laughs> to fill up in gas so it's like I don't want to be making you know more than one trip and sometimes there's lots of communication and things like that and it's, it's nobody's fault but um that would probably be the worst case not just today but any other day you know when there is if I show up to an inspection and it doesn't pass or it's not ready um the ground monitorings are fun um but really boring yeah. Like really boring. Like imagine, I mean, it's like watching someone paint a wall. It's like, I'm not doing anything and I'm only there to make sure that they do it in 90 minutes. And then I send them home if they don't do it. And I mean, it's like, not that yeah. hard. Yeah. So, but other than that, I'm, I'm com sounding like I'm complaining. I'm not, it really, I haven't had a terrible, terrible day where I'm just like, Oh, you know, F this job. I can't do it. I, I really like what I do and I love doing inspections and I even like to do the grout monitoring because I kind of have free time there. Yeah. I get a lot of work on my laptop. I get all the paperwork that I need done because I'm just sitting there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not complaining, complaining, but if I were to talk about the worst days, that's, those would probably be it. Gotcha. And what do you think has been like mm -hmm. your best day so far? My best day was probably my first day just yeah. because I finally was where I have been wanting to be since I started high school, you know, and I'm just really in my life that I noticed is I'm always trying to get to just the next step, the next level, yeah. you know, I don't really enjoy the present that much because mm -hmm. um, I just want to get to the next thing, get to the next thing, finish this, get this exam, get the, you know, because there's just yeah. always something I want to get to. And this is the first time in my life where I'm like, I did it. I, I, this is the moment that I've been waiting for and I did it and I'm going to enjoy it. And that first day was like, it was awesome. That was probably my best day. Yeah. That's so cool. Love it. Mm -hmm. Um, this question is actually for my friend, Alyssa. She wanted me specifically to ask you this. Um, what do you say to young women everywhere that have a hard time standing up for themselves in a male dominated field? I get this question a lot too. And hi, Alyssa, by the way. Um, but I get this question a lot. And it's a, t it's a tough, tough question because I feel like I, maybe I wasn't born with it, but just through life, I've had a pretty tough skin and I just have been that way my whole life. So anybody that doubts me, anybody that talks crap, anybody that says nasty things, I have no problem standing up for myself or giving it back and clapping back. And I'm very quick on my feet in that aspect. 
Um, for someone who doesn't have that, um, yeah, I know a lot of my friends, you know, my siblings, you know, not everybody's born with this like tough exterior and some people say it's a flaw, but I like it. Um, <laughs> most people don't have this tough exterior and, and are introverts and don't like confrontation. A lot of people hate confrontation, so they like to avoid it. Um, so my advice would be to start like within, okay? Don't deal with the men that are saying those things, but start with yourself. Be confident in yourself because when, with what comes with that will come you being able to say, fuck off, you yeah. know? And there's, it's like written in a bunch of psychology books that if you just wake up every single day and you look in the mirror and you say, I am pretty, I am wealthy, I am rich in the brain, I, I am beautiful, I am successful. If you say those things to yourself, eventually your brain will quite literally start to believe it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a psych major, but that's what I've read and I've heard. <laughs> um, so I do that, you know, even on days, I have bad days too, where I just don't feel good or don't feel pretty or just someone says something, you know, on the job side that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way and I didn't like it or it kind of crossed that line that I just didn't like. It made me uncomfortable. And sometimes I need to just remember that I'm a boss. I'm a bit, I'm, oh, I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm a boss bitch. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and have that confidence in yourself it's the way that you carry yourself that men don't even want to approach you and say rude things because of the way that you carry yourself mm -hmm. um so that I guess would be my best advice is just start start within like start with yourself and everything else will come with it and um there's also, I made a video on my other TikTok because I made like another one because I got shadow banned, whatever, long story short. <laughs> um, there is a thin line on the job site where for a woman, it's, it's just a thin line where you can either take the joke and laugh and, and clap back to them and mm -hmm. keep it witty and keep it, you know, fun and cool and be like the jokester and you can joke with the guys. But also there's a thin line for when you stand up for yourself and say, hey, I didn't like that joke, or hey, that wasn't funny, don't joke like that, or please don't say stuff like that, then you become the bitch that can't take the joke. You're right. the typical female that just can't joke around, like, oh, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. And it's a very thin line that if you stand up for yourself in that aspect one time, you're just like the worst, you know, you can't even take a joke. So I don't even know how to navigate that. I'm sure some people probably think I'm an ass, um, because I'll be like, no, don't like, that's not funny. Or I'll ignore their joke or something. But I do like to keep it light and, and joke back and whatever. Like the other day I got, they, they still to this day roast me on these pair of jeans that I wore one time. Um, they were these pair of mom jeans that I got from like Pac Sun, and they just hate them. Every time I wear them, they're like, what are you wearing? And they roast me, all of them, every guy out there. And it's like, Fun stuff like that that I'll joke back, you know, and I still get roasted too. But if and if anyone were to ever cross the line, um, I would definitely be like, uh, no, mm -hmm. don't, you know, yeah, don't, don't, because then I'll call your manager or I'll call your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call your boss. Oh. Iconic. Yeah. My last question. Um, we have to know what is your Dunkin' order. <laughs> Okay, that's hilarious. Go to order is caramel iced coffee with cream and sugar. That's it. So simple. And it's the best. Oh my God. It's like that's been my classic since high school days. Um, but with this TikTok fame, I guess a lot of people have commented their orders. And one of their holiday drinks, the gingerbread flavor. <sighs> It is so, now they don't have it, obviously. So I went back to the caramel today, but that was no, like, if we're at Christmas time, I'm getting gingerbread every day. Mm -hmm. and that was the best coffee I'd ever have, mm -hmm. ever have. But classic is just caramel, cream, and sugar. Love that. Simple. Iced. Of iced. course, always. Over everything. Yeah. yeah, iced, always. Even if it's cold outside, you get iced. Like, oh, we awesome. don't do hot coffee. There's snow outside. Yeah. 
I drove in the snow to get that. Exactly. See, you get it. You get it. <laughs> okay. I think that was, I think that was all the questions I had, did I? Please. Yeah, it was. Are you ready? Those were good questions. Really? Yeah, they were really good questions. I like okay. them a lot. I didn't want to, like, ask you the questions that everyone asks you, because, like, I didn't oh, want to. I liked those a lot. Yay. Okay, good. Those were good. Yay. Now let's okay. play this game. I'm ready. Let's play it. Okay. Stop the stereotype. Here, back again. We did it a couple episodes ago. However, everyone loved her, so she's back. Um, I'm going to ask you um, 10 questions. And they are true or false questions. So I'm going to say true or false, say the statement. And then you can, if it's self-explanatory, all you have to say is true or false. You don't even have to explain. But if you want to explain, you can go ahead. So what are they, stereotypes? They're stereotypes of like college women in STEM. Okay, go ahead. I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, the first one, it starts off with a bang. Okay, I'm nervous. True or false? Women can't do as good of a job as men. <laughs> false. 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 Period. Period. Zero oh. explanation. Zero. Number two. Um, true or false? Men feel threatened by women in STEM. They should true. be. They should be. <laughs> Just go through my comments on TikTok. <laughs> Take five minutes out of your day, and there's your explanation. <laughs> there it is. L literally. Um, literally. This is where I also got a lot of these true or false from your page and, like, other people's pages. Girl. It may oh. I'll comment. I'll I will start comment wars with anyone. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. My sister was like, Colleen, like, you need to stop with all the, like, hate comments. And I'm like, number one, it's, like, therapeutic. Yes. Comment back. Like, I, I'm sorry. I have to have the last word or just make them look stupid. Yeah. Either or is fine, but I can't let it go. Mm -hmm. I cannot. Like, it just will, my brain will want to explode. Um, so I'll go to, I'll go to war all day long. Yep. I'll sit there all day and, and fight with them in the comments. I don't care. We are the same person. I have to send, I have to send you one of the Eight comments I got once. Oh my god. It was oh, I love to see it. I got you. Um, number three. True or false? Women and men should make the same amount of money for the same job. True. True. They're cake. Where is it though? Yeah. yeah no, I, I know. True. True. Because guess what? I did the same schooling as they did. The yeah. exact same classes is them the same job if we have the same job we're getting paid the same yeah. like if my job is less than that man's job absolutely pay me less right. or if i don't have the education for it or whatever the qualification pay me less but but if me and him are literally equal like in academics and education and requirements certifications then we get paid the same yep Agreed. Yep. Okay. True or false? Engineering is one of the hardest majors in college. I mean, I'm going to say true. <laughs> but, um, if you Google it and you ask what the hardest undergraduate degree is, it's engineering. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's law school. Obviously, there's medical school. Obviously, there's literal brain surgeons. Okay. Right. But that's all um, graduate school. If for undergrads, I believe the hardest undergraduate that you can just get in one BS degree is uh, is engineering, for sure. I'll yeah. say true. Yeah. I would definitely say true as well. Um, true or false, women and STEM majors have to work harder in school to get a job after school. <sighs> I don't know. That didn't really happen at Florida State mm -hmm. much. Um, everybody that I know found a job literally like that, like even before we graduated, which was great. Um, but with this platform that I've had, I've seen a lot of issues that women are having finding jobs. And 
internships and things like that, which I didn't know I was oblivious to because everybody in my school got a job. I mean, one kid like who I was really good friends with got offered the job six months before I even graduated and was already getting paid on salary while we were in school. I mean, it was like dream job. So he was a guy, but whatever. Every girl that I know too has moved on to a job. So what was the question again? I want to answer that they have a, they have to work harder in school. I would, I mean, I'd say true, Mm -hmm. even though that wasn't the case for me or anybody that I know, just overall, it it probably is true. Just with stereotypes and things like that. I I prove a point. Not that they work harder, but I believe school is harder for girls. Um, Just with men sometimes just real assholes really just the worst so i'd say true yeah absolutely um true or false there's no diversity in stem diversity meaning any sort of diversity i'm trying to think back to my what my classes looked like Mm -hmm. like not just as far as like men and women maybe now I believe it's way more diverse than it, it has ever been. Um, like our generation for sure. But the generation before us, it is not diverse. Right. At all. Mm-hmm. Like it is white men. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> so Period. yeah, like there's really no diversity there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know how to, I mean, today I believe it's much more diverse, especially yeah. at Florida State. So Florida State, their engineering program is the exact same as FAMU's. So we take the same classes as like our classes are conjoined with FAMU. It's just when we graduate, one says Florida State, one says Florida a and So I would say it's pretty diverse. Especially yeah, progress with- is progress. Yeah, I would say it's, it's pretty diverse. Um, yeah. Comparatively, I'm not saying it's where I would like it to be, but right. it's, I think it's there. I yeah. think it, it's really better. Yeah. Upward of diversity, yeah. I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, this one I got from one of your TikToks. True or false? Women in STEM are not pretty. <laughs> oh my God. So one that is like okay well that's not the case it's not the case nowadays um back maybe 40 years ago it was very rare that a woman was in the engineering field at all back 40 years ago um so there was definitely and this isn't this, like, I think all women are beautiful. I'm not saying it. Like, I'm not saying one woman is prettier than the other. But there was definitely a look, mm. I would say. Period. More, yeah. And now, but now, like, even at Florida State, I think there were some of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Mm. All, at, all at the engineering school. Like, it was... Like there were Zeta girls, there were DG girls, there were girls all in every sorority. And I kind of felt left out because I was like, wait a second, how are you all in the sorority? And I couldn't do it. Like I mentally just couldn't do sorority. It just was school. It was hard. Um, But now I just, I think it's so diverse now that there are just beautiful women everywhere in it. So false. Love it. Um, True or false? Wait, Read that a question again. I want to make sure I answer it correctly. Women in STEM are not pretty. False. Oh, false. Yeah, yeah. That's false. false. <laughs> yeah. Hey, absolutely okay. false. Yes. <laughs> um, true or false? Civil engineering is the best engineering. True. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I love that civil just because... <laughs> I love civil just because, you know... I'm a civil, but, um, but no, I mean, all the engineerings I think are great. Like the other day I did that roast. I thought it was so funny. Um, <laughs> on my TikTok, I did the first yeah. where I just roasted all the other engineers, but I think anybody that's in, in any STEM is just, I think that all, all majors are all, all stems of STEM are great. Yes. <laughs> Love it. 
Um, true or false? Haters or motivators? Oh, we talked about this. True. No, true. True. The truest. True. Absolutely true. That's not, yeah, true. No Next. <laughs> Last but not least. True or false? Women in STEM are powerful and changing the world. True. True, 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 true. 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 Yes, absolutely. And the other thing that I want to touch back on is um, were fe- you said are females pretty or were they pr- or whatever the question was, pretty females are they in STEM? So some of the outfits that I wear, my sister, I mean, like I said, the dudes even ragged on me because there there is a certain way you have to dress when you're out on the construction sites and it's baggy jeans, boots. I mean, I wear what the dudes wear, you know? So right. the, no, I don't look good. You know, mm-hmm. no one's going to look good in a big, you know, yellow, orange vest with baggy jeans and boots and glasses and a hard hat. You know, I'm not going to look my prettiest. Mm-hmm. But now with women are, are starting to be more engineers and even me too, I'm starting to get a little more diverse in my outfit wearing. And I think with more women joining the field, there's going to be more options. Cause even when I went like boot shopping, I had to look in the dude section. There's no women steel toe boots. And if they are, they're freaking ugly. Like I'm going to be real. They're not cute. And I was not going to wear them. Absolutely not. So I think with women coming into the field, there's going to be a more diverse selection of outfits and it's going to, ch- we're going to change the world. I just yeah. think we're going to change everything about them and just make because right now it is a guy's field so the outfits you wear are guy outfits Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding I asked I asked my boss first before I started work I went in there just to meet everybody in the office and I said so what do I wear on a construction set like what is something that I can wear that I can come to the office to and also go to an inspection Mm. he looks at himself and then looks at me and goes just wear like what I'm wearing sir uh, sir, <laughs> shopping. Um, the, the men's section in Macy's. Like, where do you want me to shop? Like, what am I supposed to do? So I literally went to Dick's Sporting Goods. I got a hundred pairs of jeans from Old Navy and a bunch of golfing um, uh, collared shirts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't wear them so much anymore because I'll get like a farmer's tan right here, like yeah. where the sleeve is pale right. and the rest of my arms tan. Mm-hmm. so I think with more women coming into the field it's gonna we're just gonna take over I think yes and make a more diverse out I mean look maybe I should just start a fashion a fashion I was what was I gonna say a fashion design okay. like a like a line copyright it did we just yeah did we just did we just come up with a business idea because um, I feel like because now I'm talking about that was a really good question because there's like not a lot to wear. Yeah, there's not a lot to wear. And girl, wow, girl, I'm like, sorry, my my brain is like firing (laughs) off. Like, (laughs) that's wow. Wow, women are about to be the hottest girls you've ever seen (laughs) walking up to that. I think I'm gonna make high heels like the um oh my god um Lita boots am I like the boots I wore them all they're the really chunky heel Mm -hmm. and they're like sneakers they tie up but they're they're not sneakers yeah the black and it's like a wood heel the big boot heel yeah I used to wear those I think they're called Lita boots are they I'm going to Google this. Hold on. This is like, hold on. It's going to happen. Hold on. No, that's not the name. What are they called? Oh, that's going to piss me off. (laughs) Peanut boot heels. But like, okay, so like kind of like this style. But like, but like the the, the laces in the front. 
Yeah, like super high. Oh, I was picturing them not that high. I don't know why I can't find it. I thought they were called beta boots, but anyways. Anyways, so. Wow, okay. Love that. I might make a. Fashion one, you need an accountant. No, it is funny though, because my sister gives me crap all the time because my fashion sense is non-existent. Oh, like yeah. I'll go to work sometimes and just like nothing. Like today I kind of like look decent, but. I don't match. My jeans are raggedy. Like, mm -hmm. I just don't look good. And my sister's like, that's literally disgusting. Like, you need to go shopping. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what am I going to wear? Like, options. I don't have options. There's zero You know, it's like, yeah, there's nothing for me to wear, you know, that I can go buy. You know, like, if I was in an office, there's a whole section of, like, nice office wear in, in stores. But what am I going to go look at? Men's size jeans? Like <laughs> you just you just did something right there. I think I did too. Yep. I think I did too. Okay, because I think I think that has to do with the stereotype of, you know, STEM girls aren't pretty, you know, because like I, I got ragged on all day the last three days because of my jeans. Obviously when I pull up and I'm in baggy jeans and huge Columbia blue boots and a hard hat. No guy's going to look at that and be like, Ugh, hey, you know, <laughs> like, they're going to be like, you know, <laughs> like, what are you wearing in my greasy hair? Like, I look like a monster. So I feel like we could really just change a lot of stuff with the fashion line. My head's oh. going. You're in fashion, aren't you? Yeah. Maybe we just did something here. I think we did. Okay. Okay. Deal. Okay. Deal. I'll hit you up when I, I'm going to, I'll talk to my lawyer about it. <laughs> I'm talking to my fiance. <laughs> oh, that's great. That game was fun. I like that. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. You have anything else you want to add or anything? Not really. I think we really covered it all. I really liked your questions that you asked and I really like that truth of dare. I think it just kind of covers my whole everything existence yeah perfect that was the goal yeah i think that was great and we did it in like no time at all or no. how long we've we been on this i don't know time like flew though an hour, maybe almost an hour that's crazy Can you I'm, see it on your phone i don't, I don't think it has the time yeah no i can't see it i thought maybe it would have the time Lame. well for yeah. having me again I mean that was cool. I like I like answering questions and I like being able to talk about it and I like having a platform that I can talk about engineering and confidence and girls in a male-dominated field etc things yeah. that no one else really talks about True. Yeah. that's the problem like we need right. more people talking about it yeah I, absolutely so thank you so much I'll I be the really voice appreciate it y'all I hope you enjoyed that interview that I had I mean, she is literally such an icon, and I can't thank her enough for coming on again. Guys, she's definitely going to be on again. Are you kidding me? We're so entertaining together. Um, I absolutely loved her, and I still do, obviously. Not say it in the past tense, but thank you so much again, Colleen. Like, you are an awesome influence on, you know, young women, women who are going into the workforce, um, and women who are going to be in a male-dominated field. We love you. And again, please follow all her social medias. They'll be in the links down below. Get her to 200k, guys. We can do it. We can, we can definitely do it. Um, and if you are from her TikTok listening, you guys are awesome. I saw a lot of, like, engineer majors following me the other day. And you guys, I, I could never. So I just commemorate you guys for that. Um, keep pushing through school. And I guess let's get into... The announcement oh my god oh, i have to like take a breath i'm so excited so when i started this podcast um i just you know had an idea and it was more for me about getting the podcast out um and getting like you know supporters and just getting everyone's voices out really quick instead of like marketing and like if you see my Instagram, you know about the white marble. You're probably sick of it because I am. Um, and I started to get sick of it months ago. But, you know, I was thinking, when's a good time to rebrand? 
I know it's early, it's only the 17th episode. However, I think it really will boost us up and get our supporters up, especially with a guest like Colleen because she is, you know, somebody who brings a good amount of followers and I was like, oh, this would be literally perfect. I reached out to one of my um, alumni, sorority sisters, um, Ashley, who has multiple small businesses and I guess I'll start with that. Instead of T-shirt Tuesday, T-shirt Tuesday, what the hell? <laughs> t-shirt of the week I'm thinking of other things in my head I'm very sorry instead of t-shirt of the week um, like we usually do for our YouTube channel we are going to be doing small business of the week that includes any small business you know um, including podcasts because as much as it is a competitive um, type of world I still want to uplift all my friends who have podcasts um, and that you know have asked me for advice and are thriving so any small business I would love to highlight you please hit me up anyone you think um, would be good I would love to highlight them for an episode and hopefully I get a bunch hopefully I get so much that I can do too Ooh. Um, but I would love to give them that spotlight and yeah I'm gonna do small business um, instead of t-shirts very sad but I'm very excited maybe we'll get some promo codes in there for you but you know if you're gonna be shopping online shopping during during a pandemic or you're going to be bored you rather do it for a small business somebody that um you know is not for the patriarchy okay <laughs> anyways um and with that being said i am rebranding so that's just one of the steps but our instagram our twitter um our youtube channel or everything our logo and our intro i'm going to basically close out this video with our new intro I'm still kind of working on it if I tweak it here and there, but this is what I liked so far. It's kind of a long intro, but I like it. Um, and, you know, as the podcast grows, my, you know, marketing will grow with it as well. And I just can't thank everyone enough for all their support. And hopefully soon we'll be getting some merch out, um, starting with hopefully stickers. Like that would be so cool um, just to get the word around. And yeah. I, I'm really excited. Um, so go check out the Instagram and go share it with your friends and family too about the rebrand. I would absolutely love that. Um, and yeah, let me know what you guys think. And I am so excited um, to help you grow into your potential next week. This is Jasmine with the Adult Algorithm signing off. Bye. I literally am editing this and I forgot two important things. I don't know how I forgot these. One, we have a new day we will be posting on tuesdays from now on tuesday morning um instead of mondays and that's gonna be really exciting i'm really excited for that um and second we will be doing for every topic that we have a spotify playlist we'll be posting it you will be able to follow it you'll be able to you know tell me songs you want to put on it and for this month um about growth and love it is going to be in our link tree I believe um so go follow it and I'm really excited okay anyways here's the new intro welcome to the adult algorithm podcast the how to adult podcast first of all if you don't have a planner get one I don't know this how ain't you, high school I don't know how you survive there will be no sugar coating whatsoever this is the hashtag no sugar coating podcast and I'm your host Jasmine Johnson like the best influence and the worst influence all in one. Are you ready to grow into your potential?